Well, we continue our uh, special interview uh, features here at the Alberta Fishing Game Association. And I think many people know our next guest as the chair of uh, the AFGA Fish Committee, but he's putting on a different hat. Real pleasure to welcome Daryl Smith. And uh, Daryl, you are now looking after something called the Membership Focus Priorities Programs Committee. That's quite the mouthful, but uh, in all seriousness, it's a, it's a pretty important committee as you look at, I guess, paving the future of the AFGA? That's exactly right. I think any organization has to look at the future. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, you know, are we providing the services, um, doing the things that our members want today, but also recognize that Alberta is changing. Um, you know, we have a lot of new Canadians. We have generations of, you know, younger people in this province. This is a young province. So we, I think we have to look at our organization and make sure we're doing things that will keep it, uh, you know, the organization people want to join. What are some of the steps that your committee is, is going through in order to determine that path? So there's, we obviously want to look at membership what we can do um, for the members themselves. Um, what do those members want us to do? So a lot of that's to deal with the focus of the organization. Um, and what I mean by that is that, you know, are we a habitat organization such as our wildlife trust fund, okay? Or are we an advocacy organization? So we're gonna advocate on behalf of those members for things that they believe that are important. So obviously angling and hunting have been, uh, you know, our big advocacy focus, but um, there's a change in attitudes and it's, it's a lot about the experience. Um, and the experience sometimes goes beyond fishing and uh, goes beyond hunting. It's about the camping, um, being out there in the nature. So we have to make sure that the organization is representing the interests of a lot of different uh, people. And there lies in a challenge because uh, let's face it, it from a, from a structural point of view, from a, an administrative point of view, you don't have the big numbers that maybe Ontario, Saskatchewan, British Columbia have in terms of supporting a wide range of programs. So it, it, it there are some, certainly some very practical challenges that are, are blocking this path, aren't there? Yeah, Alberta is, um, has a, first of all, the public has a lot of choice into which organizations they want to support, perhaps uh, more so than other provinces. Uh, so, you know, that's a challenge for an organization such as AFGA that's so multifaceted, has so many different things. So we're not just looking after, say, habitat. So you're, you're right, is that... Um, you know, we rely on our members uh, to fund the organization. And, um, you know, thank goodness that uh, they will open their pockets and help. Um, but at the same time, we're very small. Um, you know, we only have uh, really two staff in the office right now or three staff. Uh, that's it. Um, so it, it we rely on our volunteers perhaps more than any other organization um, in the conservation area. When you look at, I, I mean, let's face it, the Alberta Fish and Game Association is, has been built on a, on a legacy. It's been around for a long time. When you come in and, and, and tinker with that element, how, how difficult is that? So, as a society, people are resistant to change anyways. I, I, that, you know, that's, that's true. Um, I've been really fortunate. Uh, the people that have sat on the, the committees that are sort of before this one, which was uh, which the last six months we were doing, um, I would like to say that they're visionaries. Uh, they, they, they're looking at the future. That's what they're and that's what they believe is important. At the same time, um, they're respectful of, you know, the legacy. Um, the legacy is important. It, you know, it's the foundation. 
And you know what? There's a lot of strong things in the foundation that we can uh, build on. So I would say it's not that the recommendations are going to change the organization greatly, but they are going to hopefully use that legacy and then provide, um, I guess, a, a bit more focus uh, perhaps than we've had in the past. So probably more focus on uh, habitat rather than the broader portfolio of environment, for example. Um, so things like that. Uh, and sure where, where are you in the process right now? I guess, how far along has the committee uh, come down a certain way? And, and where do you, when do you see sort of presenting your, your vision uh, at the end of the road here? Well, we went through uh, a webinar or an out a Zoom type of event where we kind of outlined, um, you know, I guess the broad concepts. Um, and, you know, the majority of the people that is peer to support some of that uh, or most of it, what we did there. So um, basically, I would say that the next two to three months are critical. Uh, and where we're going to start is we're going to look at the objects of the organization. So the objects are a legislated requirement um, for any organization to have. And we're going to make sure that our objects, which is like the goals or the purpose that the organization was established, you know, meet the current expectations. And uh, with that, um, that's where we're going to, in the next couple of months, make sure that those objects uh, think represent who we need to be and who we are now. Uh, another interesting factor about the work that you folks are doing, it, it's not taking place in silos. You are collaborating with other, not only executive members, but you, you know, the finance committee, for example, plays a, a critical role in this because you might be able to set a direction, but if you don't have the dollars and cents in front of you to pay for it, it, it creates some other, some other issues. So talk a little bit about that collaborative approach, Daryl. Right. So there's been four communities established. Okay. Um, one is communications. I mean, that's critical in this day and age. Uh, and this, we just have to, uh, people like me, uh, perhaps didn't know about Zoom uh, uh, not too long ago. Um, I still struggle with Facebook, but the way we communicate has changed. So we have a communications and that's absolutely critical. Um, we have a governance committee now. Um, governance is, you know, how the organization is gonna run, you know, do the bylaws uh, allow us to do the things that we're supposed to do. And then, um, you're totally right. The finance committee or FAR, um, you know, capacity, like everyone wants us to do everything, but we do have to make some real choices. And so we'll, we, you know, this is a collaborative approach. Uh, you know, we share our information from ours and we ask the other committees, okay, how can we enable this? Or maybe we can't enable it all, but let's come up with a direction uh, maybe it's two years down the road or three years down the road, but let's let the members know, you know, where we're going. All right. We'll leave it there. Uh, Daryl Smith, thank you so much for your time. And folks, just remember, if you've got some comments or questions, uh, please send them into the Alberta Fish and Game Association and those will be addressed. Till next time, I'm Michael Short.